like and got you another video done. So we are uh, the last video was the truth about tithing. If you didn't see it, go back and check it out. Very good information as far as tithing and what the truth is about that. I'm gonna use one of the scriptures from that video and then we're gonna go to First Corinthians chapter nine if you wanna follow along with us. Some of the scriptures I'll put on the screen, some of them I probably won't. Uh, Sometimes I put all of them on there. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's just roll with it and see what we got. And what I want to do is, as you saw this title, and so we can talk a little bit on it, Does do do should my preacher get paid? Should preachers get paid or not? I, is it okay to pay my preacher? Is it okay to pay the preacher a salary? Should preachers... Uh, so this video is, should preachers receive a salary? Should preachers be paid? So let's answer the question because uh, I don't know if my um, the truth about tithing rubs some preachers the wrong way. And I'm not eating crow and I'm not backing up from what I said, but I am going to balance the message off, okay? First scripture, I'll get straight to the point. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and 7. And if you saw that, should we tithe or not? You, this was one of the scriptures we used. The, I read New Living and King James. Every man according as he's purpose in his heart, so let him give. Not grudgingly, not of necessity, for God love a cheerful giver. New Living. You must each decide in your heart how much to give. No one tell you what to give. You decide in your heart what you want to give. And don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure, for God loves a person who gives cheerfully. I explain it on to, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, good to tithe or not, whether you should tithe or not. I explain that. I'm going to explain it just a little bit more on here. You should give freely and voluntarily. I would make more comments on it, but there's no need because the, the next scriptures that we use, they're going to pretty much cover those comments. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. And I went, I started at 7. I like to start at verse 1, but some people might not have time. So I, I went straight to the good stuff and kind of to the bullseye of it. Who go off to war anytime at his own charges? Uh, who planted for vineyard and eateth not of the fruit thereof? Or uh, who feeds a flock and eateth not the milk of the flock? New Living, what soldier has to pay his own expenses? What farmer plants a vineyard and doesn't have the right to eat some of its fruits? What shepherd cares for a flock of sheep and isn't allowed to drink some of the milk? These, this scripture is simply saying, if you work or if you got a flock of sheep and you took care of them and made sure they stayed alive and protect them from the wolf, uh, then when you milk those sheep, you you would think that you would be allowed to drink some of that milk. It would be, I think it would be rude. I think it would be evil to say, thanks for taking care of my sheep. Don't drink any of the milk. That would be rude. Uh, it would also be rude, making reference to verse 7 of chapter 9 of 1 Corinthians, to send a soldier to war to fight for his country and but tell him we need you to go to Germany or go wherever the war is go to Iraq and uh, but pay y'all get you a plane ticket and figure out how to get there but you better be there on time that would be rude that sounds crazy because that is crazy okay uh, so keep that in mind and mind you when you read chapter 9 of 1st Corinthians on your own this is Apostle Paul, same guy that wrote 2 Corinthians, or first direct, I'm sorry, wrote 2 Corinthians. It's the same guy uh, that said, give what you have on your heart to give. Okay? Just wanted to say that. All right, verse 8, New Living. Am I expressing merely a human's opinion, or does the law say the same thing? In a sense, Paul's saying, do you think this is me talking, or do you think this is a God idea. Some stuff is a good idea, and then some stuff is a God idea. 
So it's just a God idea. If it was put in the law, then who wrote the law? Who inspired to write the law? God did. And so he's saying this was a God idea that you take care of the soldier and that you're able to drink the milk from the goats and the sheep that you taken care of and that you protected. Verse 9, for the law of Moses says, you must not muzzle the ox to keep it from eating as it treads out the grain. Was God thinking about oxen or was, when he said this, wasn't he actually speaking to us? Yes, this is verse 10, I apologize. It was written for us so that the one who plows and the one who threshes the grain might both expect a share of the harvest. Let me go back to nine real quick. For the law of Moses says, you must not muzzle the ox to keep it from eating. What does that mean? I guess my brain was thinking ahead of my mouth. When the ox is pulling the plow, that's old school stuff. Now we got tractors and all kinds of equipment. But at that time, the ox would pull the plow or pull the apparatus to help you gather all of your goods, all your goods. Well, while it was gathering the grain, Moses saying, would you dare put a muzzle over his mouth so that he couldn't eat a little bit of the grain while he's working? Would you do that? Who would do that? I mean, like, really, who who would do that? And I know some of y'all say, man, that would be mean. It sure would. I, I, We're going we gonna to get there. Verse 11, we did 10 already. Since we have planted spiritual seed among you, aren't we entitled to harvest of physical food and drink? And King James says, if we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we should reap your carnal things? And he's got a question mark there. He's saying, wow, if you got a pastor, and I know some of y'all got these preach on Sunday for 30 minute pastors, but what about the pastors that every time you call, he answers? Or that when mom is sick, he's at the hospital. Or when your kids are sick, or just let's just say less, when your loved ones are sick, he's there, either at your home or at the hospital. Should you pay that, Pastor? Should you cover the mouth of the ox that's getting the grain for you? Should you should you not drink of some of the sheep's milk if you're taking care of a flock of them? Should you be entitled to it? Verse 12, if you support others who preach to you, shouldn't we have an even uh, greater right to be supported? But we have never used this right. Now, what, let me say this. Now, Paul said all of that, and Paul's like me. And I'm, I'm glad this part came up. I am not asking for anything. But what I want to do is preach a balanced message because I don't want people to say, I'm not paying, I'm not, you know, after seeing the message about the truth about tithing, I don't want people to say, I'm not giving anything at church anymore. Well, I'm telling you, if you, if your pastor's a bum, then you need to stop going to that church. But if you have a good pastor that's taking care of you and, and, and being there for you, and you know what, you know, if he's getting good to you, then it is equivalent to you covering that ox's mouth, knowing that he's the reason why you have e gotten the corn more efficiently and gotten the grain, uh, he's, why you have harvested and things have happened better for you uh, because of that ox. It is equivalent to you covering his mouth. I'm from down south. That would be low down. So that's why this scripture is saying this. Now, Paul, he lived with these people, with the church of Corinth. He was there. He was on scene. He said, if you support others who preach, and it's weird how we do here, we would let some guy fly in from out of town, and we would roll out the red carpet. But we won't take care of our local preachers. 
And now, and let me pick on some of the pastors real quick because your your, your associate preachers or ministers won't say this. Y'all pay people that come from out of town big money, and then when some of the guys that go to the church and tithe at the church and they're there every Sunday, when they preach, you don't pay them anything. You give them a handshake. Thank y'all. Thank you, Brother Smith. And you send him by on his way. Take care of the man that's right there in your house. Verse 12. If you support others who preach to you, shouldn't we have an even greater right to be supported? And listen at Paul. But we have never used this right. We would rather put up with anything than to be an obstacle to the good news about Christ. Verse 13, don't you realize that those who work in the temple get their meals from the offerings brought into the temple? He's just trying to really help some people understand this. And those who serve at the altar get a share of the sacrificial offerings. If you work at the church, you ought to get paid. And not just, uh, you know, here in Mobile, they'll pay the guy that's on the keyboard. They'll pay the guy that's on the drums. And they'll pay the guy that's leading the choir. But all the other people that's working, and this is just some experiences I've dealt with, they don't get paid. They don't get compensated. So I guess I'm an advocate for the people that's not getting paid, you know. But 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 it's just, just not what this, it, it's not what this video is about. It's really about. Uh, min the ministry I, I started this with, with just preachers in mind or just pastors in mind but really this is about whoever ministers whoever serve they really have a right to be compensated now I don't exercise that right uh, or I just it's just not in my mind to ask for anything I'm here to preach uh, I always think about the scripture that Jesus mentioned when he sent his disciples out. He said, freely you receive, freely give. You know, freely give. Uh, uh, in the same breath, Jesus also said, when he sent them out, he said, don't take anything with you. You know, so all that stuff is very important. Verse 14, maybe our last verse. In the same way, the Lord ordered that those who preach the gospel... The good news should be supported by those who benefit from it. That's our last verse. I'll say this. If you're benefiting from your church and your pastor is being a blessing to you, then yes, he should get paid. I don't know how much. Maybe you should go back to 2 Corinthians, and, or maybe you should just reason within your heart and say, you know what, how much do I want to give to this ministry? How much do I feel good about, feel, you know, it says God loves a cheerful giver. Well, you should say, how much am I happy to give back to this ministry? And then let that be your offering. Still, no amount, no 10%. It's just all 2 Corinthians chapter 79 says, as you purpose in your heart, give. God bless you. We'll see you next time. Richard Brown.